Hello, I'm Atuba George and I'm so blessed today to be bringing God's truth to you. Hey, today is the 31st of the month of August. And listen, tonight by 12 midnight, West African time, we're going to begin our fasting and prayer into tomorrow, the 1st of September. Now, I want you to join us in this fasting and prayer meeting. And we, we normally pray according to the watches and our meeting is via Zoom. We pray via Zoom. So um, the, the Zoom link is on your screen. Um, uh, you can join us from any part of the world, but then we follow West African time. Praise God. So join us. We pray for one hour at every watch. So we're going to be praying at 12 midnight tonight and then 3 a.m., 6 a.m., 9 a.m., 12 noon, 3 p.m., 6 p.m. And then the last watch we're going to be praying is at 9 p.m. Praise God. It's, it's going to be a great time, I assure you. We're setting ourselves up for a great month of September. So make this first day holy and allow God to make the whole month holy. Praise God. Because that is the principle of first fruit. So when we keep the first month holy, the whole month becomes holy. He makes it holy for us. Now, what does holy mean? Not that we'll all be walking like this. No. Holy in terms of it's only what he has said. Every day of the month will do nothing but fulfill what he has said. Praise God. Some of the things I'm sharing with you now are the things the Lord is already projecting that we're going to begin to experience in the month of September. So get ready, get excited, plan for this, rest well, and join us at 12 midnight. Again, the Zoom ID is on the screen and copy it, save it, put a reminder on your phone so you don't sleep. God bless you. Praise God. Now, before we go into today's broadcast, I promised you yesterday we're going to complete what we started yesterday, I remember. But can we call for that daily bread? Are you ready? Join me right now and say, Father, I receive right now my daily bread. It's coming to me now in Jesus' name. Amen. Praise God. Okay, we were in the book of John. Our beloved brother, John D. Beloved. Praise God. Now I'll show you the ministry of Jesus. Thank you, Holy Spirit. John chapter 17. Jesus speaking here. I told you this is the end of his mission. I was telling you yesterday that Jesus came to fulfill a ministry. And the ministry he came to fulfill was not to die. He had to die so that he can carry out his ministry. But then we celebrate his death so much and forget that there was a reason he died. See? See, the Bible lets us know that he rose for our justification. Justification for what? To receive his ministry. See, he rose for our justification. All right, so. Now, you know, Jesus could have, now actually, I pray you, you're able to catch this. Because it will make you see reasons why sometimes people read scriptures and they are wondering. And sometimes they have questions in their heart they cannot ask. Because they feel, who do I ask now? My pastor will tell me that I'm reading too much. But man, these things are pertinent questions. See. Be free to ask the Holy Spirit any question at all. Ask and you shall receive so that your joy will be full. That's what Jesus said. So ask your questions. If you have questions, if you, you really need to send us a message, you'll get a clear response from us. So you have questions in your heart. Don't just say that you're studying the scriptures. You have to send it you'll get a response. Praise God. So, 
Jesus came to give life. That's why he came. Adam had not received eternal life. So Jesus was saying here, and this is towards the end of his ministry. He said, verse 2, John chapter 17, As thou hast given him power over all flesh, that he should give eternal life. Take note of that. That he should give eternal life to as many as thou hast given him. And he said, and this is life eternal, that they might know thee, the only true God and Jesus Christ, whom thou hast sent. Now I want you to understand this. The ministry of Jesus was to give man eternal life. And he is the only one. Nobody, no angel, no spirit can give that life. None. Now, how do you receive that life or how does the life work? He said it, that they might know thee, the only true God and Jesus Christ whom you have sent. So that's what eternal life is. So that's how we possess eternal life, by our knowledge of the Father and Jesus. Now, actually, actually, Ayana Makashia, what Jesus said here is that, that they might know thee, the only true God, true Jesus Christ, whom you have sent. Now you understand what Jesus meant when he said, I am the way, the truth, and the life. Then he says, no man comes to the Father but by me. Now, people have confused that statement. And they say, but now nah, people can go to God if I know. Uh -uh. He was referring to eternal life. He was not referring to come to God and say, oh God, I need help. A Muslim can do that and get help. A Hindu worshiper can do that and get help. Whosoever calls on the name of the Lord shall be saved. You don't need to be saved to call upon the name of the Lord. I'm telling you the truth. Yes. Because many of you have had those experiences. I was not even born again. I was in danger. I shouted, oh God, help me. I shouted, Jesus. And, 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 and somehow, Something happened and I was rescued. But I was not born again. So how did that happen? Yes. So why would now Jesus say, you can't come to the Father but through me? He wasn't referring to coming or calling on the name of the Lord. He was referring to coming to the place. Ah, coming to the place where the Father has ordained for us, which is what? Eternal life. He said no man can be exactly who you have ordained him to be except through Jesus. Why? Because Jesus is the one that gives us that access to the Father, not just to the Father, to eternal life. Now, having eternal life is what makes you one with God. Because now you are given access to the very life that he had. So it means you and him will begin to interact. That can never happen by any other means but through Jesus. No other means. There is nothing you are going to, there is no amount of meditation you are going to do. There is no amount of, um, uh, what, what they call it, um, um, le elevation or wh whatever they call it, that spirit is due. None. I, I give you that announcement now. None. They all see it from afar, but they can't get it. Why? Because you only get there through Jesus. He is the only one that has been given that access. And through him, we get into that life. So what Jesus actually meant here is that they might know thee, the only true God and true Jesus Christ, whom you have sent. That was the ministry of Jesus. That's what he was declaring when he said, I am the way, the truth, and 
the life. I am the way to the life. I am the truth to the life. I am the life. Praise God. No one can come to the Father. No one can come to eternal life. But true. me. So he was restating it here. That you have given me power over all flesh. He knew. He knew. That you have given me power over all flesh. That I should do what? Give this eternal life to as many. As thou hast given him. I, I'm trying to get you to understand the love of God. So we got into here. And I was telling you what the Lord began to open my understanding. To. So now the lamb was not slain from the foundation of the world. But Jesus was given an assignment from the foundation of the world. Now here it is. Every thing have been written in the book let's go back to that revelation it this will help you revelation chapter 13. are you gaining something from this revelation chapter 13 verse 8 and all take note of this carefully and all that dwell upon the earth shall worship him whose names are not written in the book of life. Now, having this understanding now that the lamb was not slain from the foundation of the world, right? Let's read it right. So, whose names were not written in the book, whose names are not written in the book of life of the lamb slain from the foundation of the world? So, whose names were not written in the book of life of the lamb from the foundation of the world. So now he's saying that there are people whose names were not written in the book of life from the foundation of the world. So their names were not written from the foundation of the world. Now look at chapter 17. It gives us more light. Chapter 17, verse 8. And let's just go straight to um, that part that we're concerned about. It says, Whose names, now that's the later part of the verse 8, still verse 8. Whose names we are not written in the book of life from the foundation of the world. Now, it means the book of life was written from the foundation of the world. Take note of this. And, hallelujah. Thank you, Holy Spirit. If you know the love of God, you become sober. I'm telling you the truth, you become sober. Because then you begin to realize that there's nothing new, there's nothing strange on the earth. There are just disobedient people. There is nothing hard, there is nothing strange, there is nothing new. Just disobedient people. Now, the book of life was written from the foundation of the world. But then there are those whose names were never written. Okay. The names that were written, they were written from the foundation of the world. Not now. See? Not now. Jesus comes here in John chapter 17 and he's talking to the father he says you have given me authority power to give life to everyone that you have given me everyone you have given me now you understand why John saw in the book of Revelation and he called him the lamb slain so he said, the book of life of the Lamb. The book of life of the Lamb. So Jesus, was John rather, or because Jesus was showing him this revelation. John was seeing that the Lamb was Jesus has a book 
And this book contains the names of people he, Ayana Kusepra, that have received life from him according to what he said here. And that's eternal life. Oh, you need to read what John was talking about here. This will help you. You know, sometimes these things come to help your understanding of, of the scriptures and life in general, not just to, to get, have something new to teach. No, it helps you reason. Truth. Jesus said, you shall know the truth and the truth shall make you free. So it helps you reason right. It helps you think in perspective. Now, watch this. Notice, he says, there are people, now this was when the tribulation was taking place. And so he says, there were people who, now all they that dwell on the earth shall worship him. Not everybody. He says, those whose names were not written in the book of Lamb, on the book of life of the Lamb. So meaning the people whose names are here will not worship the beast. See that now? There's going to be a clear distinction. Why will they not worship the beast? Because they have received eternal life. They cannot be destroyed by the beast. They are not afraid of destruction. They fear nothing. That's why they will not bow and worship that beast. So it's, it's going to be like Shadrach, Meshach and Abednego. Where they say, if you don't bow to this image, we'll throw you into the burning furnace. And they said, oh king, don't worry. We're not careful to answer you about this matter. And I told you before, they were not rude. He said, if it is so, the Lord whom we serve will deliver us from the burning furnace. And he will deliver us from your hands. So more like they were saying, look, we are different. We have a different species. That fire will not do anything to us. And they meant it. So you see, that's a type of what's going to happen in the future. Because now, anyone who doesn't bow to the beast will be dealt with. Ah, Lizzo, everybody, bow. But there are those who will not bow. Who are they? They are the ones who have received eternal life. From who? From Jesus. And how did they receive an eternal life? They have come to know, just like John said. John, the same John again. Yes. Now you understand why they couldn't kill John. Yes. You understand why they put him in a cauldron of burning oil, boiling oil, and it did nothing to him. Why? Because John received eternal life from Jesus. How? Knowing him, the Father, through Jesus. Not knowing the Father through a preacher. Not knowing the Father through the Bible. Knowing the Father through fellowshipping with Jesus. And Jesus giving you access into the Father. Hallelujah. And how does Jesus do that? That's the whole reason the Holy Spirit was given to us. The Holy Spirit is Jesus. Jesus himself said, look, he will take of mine and shall reveal it unto you. He will not speak of himself. So when I begin to know the Father, not through an angel, nah, angels don't know the Father that much. No angel can give you life. Life, eternal life, is only given. And let me tell you this truth. If you don't know it, know this now. Don't claim here, the day I give my heart to Jesus Christ, I received eternal life. No, sir. Ah, 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 ah. You came into the place where the Holy Spirit was given to you. Now, the job of the Holy Spirit is to lead you in that path, adding knowledge, precept upon precept, line upon line, until you get into that place. It didn't happen the day you got born again. No, it didn't happen. That was the day you came into the journey. Don't give up today. Keep climbing. There is more. 
There is more. There is more. Until we get to that point. Hallelujah. I feel the anointing of God all over. This is what brings divine health. This is what brings divine healing. This is, this is what changes your life. Knowing him. Through Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Praise God. Praise God. Listen, my time is up. Praise God. I'll see you tonight. Tonight we're going to have a wonderful time. Join us. Make sure you don't miss it. God bless you. And, and step into the month of September in grand style. Because you will know Jesus. You will know the Father through Jesus. God bless you. See you tonight. Bye.